patterns. So next week, we're going to do some algebra products. So algebra products are things like distribution, binomials, those types of things. And then we're going to move into factorizing, which some people have already done in class, which is really cool. And then we're going to move into equations. And that's what the rest of our term two is going to look like. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about where we're headed? Thanks, Alberts. Okay. All right. So we're going to do a quick recap of Thursday's lesson. And while we're doing this question, I want you to think of something really important. I want you to think about some of the common problems. So I want you to think about our lesson from Thursday and last week, Tuesday, and think of some of the things that you um, did wrong and then you caught yourself doing wrong and you say, oh, I shouldn't do it like that. And I want you to think about those things while we're working through this example. And then when we finish this example, we're going to write up a little list to help us to make sure that we don't make those mistakes as we move forward. Okay. So what we've got over here is we've got a sequence. We've got negative 2, 4, 10, 16. All right. The first thing we're wanting to do in this situation is we want to put the position of each of those things. So this is position one, position two, position three, position four. Okay. Some people find it easier to make it into a table. So you can literally just draw a line like that. And now we've created a table and that's N, which is our input and TN, which is our output. Who can tell me what the first step is that we want to do when we have pattern? If we are trying to solve for A, if we're trying to find TN, what is the first step that we want to do? Well, Tiana. Look for the, the constant. The yes. Like. Good. We want to look for the constant difference. We want to find the difference. And in this question, what would our constant difference be? Six. Good. Okay. So to go from here to here. Good. That's the word I was looking for. It's going to be plus six. So to go from each of those numbers, we're getting plus six. So the first thing we did was we found our difference and we saw that our difference was plus six. Where does that difference go? What am I going to do now? What, how do I start writing this formula? It tells me it wants a formula for TN. Where do I go to from here? Has everyone had too long of a long weekend? This is the quietest uh, I think you've ever been. Yo, ma'am, it's, it's plus six there, then it's in. Okay, there. good. Okay, yes. there we go. Yes. Like the, the, you're going to say it's six there, and then break it one, and then it, and then plus, they must make it the first number. Good, 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 good. Well done, Tiana. Okay, so the first thing we wanted to do was we wanted to define our difference. That was the first thing we did. So this was finding the difference, okay? Then we want to start creating our formula. When we start creating our formula, we take whatever that difference is. So here it was six. Now, if it was negative six, we would write negative six and we put it in our formula over there. So we have that six and we have 60, okay? And now, exactly like Tiana said, we are wanting to now get our first term, okay? So there are lots of ways you can go about this. You can substitute one in into that n and see because your input is one, your output is negative two. So if we put in one, we know we need to get negative two. So I'm gonna show you a few different ways you can do that. But I think the easiest way is just to think, I have six and I need to get to negative two. So how do I go from six to negative two? And if you looked at that visually, if this was a little number line, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative one, negative two, negative three. Right now we are over here, we're at six and I'm trying to get to negative two. How do I go from six to negative two? How would I do that? Yes, Fatima, good. We need to minus eight. So we need to minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how we find our constant number, okay? If you don't feel comfortable looking at it like that, 
you can think about this whole first pair and think my TN is negative two, my N value is one, and I'm trying to figure out what my constant is. So I've got negative two is equal to six plus C. So C is gonna equal negative eight. And then we can put that into the formula. Both ways, e either way, you'll get to where you want to go, okay? Once you've got that formula, I highly, highly recommend you check it. So choose any other one of your pairs. So let's, for example, let's choose this three and this 10 over here and put in your values. So we have six times three, that would give me 18. 18 minus eight gives me 10. That means I know my formula works. So we check our formula. Okay. So that was looking at A. Now that we have a formula, do you feel brave enough to try B and C by yourselves? I think you can. I think you would be okay. Let's do it one step at a time. Just try B for me. Everyone give B a try. So just try your best with B. And when you have answers, you can put them into the chat for me and then we'll go through it step by step. <gasps> Not just yet. Okay. okay. Avili, I'm glad that you've said that because that is one of the common mistakes that we're going to talk about later. So it's a good thing that you did it. Keep your answers coming in. Yes or no. So you think the answer is yes, okay? Keep them coming. Keep trying. <laughs> Not sure. I like the I like the capitals, Jasmine. It's very affirmative. Okay, so we are all over the place with this question, guys. But yes, no, not sure. I don't know. I'm gonna ask something that I think is going to help you all. Is the 214 in this orange table that I've created for you, that 214, is that an N or is it a TN? Is this 214 an N, N. or a TN? N. Are you sure? An N, ma'am. Is it? So I think I think the thing, the trap that you guys fell for is that you saw the word term. And so you were like, okay, they're talking about N. But if they're saying, is it a term in the sequence? The sequence that we were given is this guy down here, the negative 2, 4, 10, 16. So if they're wanting to know if 214 is a term in the sequence, they're asking, is there a 214 in that TN over there? Is it a possible TN? And if it is a possible TN, then I will have a possible N that will go along with that possible 214. So if we're trying to figure out if 214 is a term in the sequence, all we need to do is we need to substitute that 214 into the place of TN. So I'm just gonna give you another minute to give it a try now. So try and substitute it in now, but now you're substituting it into TN. Maybe I look we should. What is ask away. Asking us? Sorry? What is Web asking us to do? 
for beef. Look for a dab of, look for a dab of in. Yeah, basically they're saying, so if in, if you work it out and your in is a decimal, then you would say, no, 214 is not a term in the sequence. And if your n is a whole number, then you would say, yes, 214 is a term in the sequence. Okay, so my answer is yes. Okay. You the yes. answer of what it is, it's 37. Eh? Okay, well, we shall see. Okay, so let's have a look. So we're saying, well, our tn is now 214. And we already know, because we made this beautiful formula in question A, that tn is 214. Okay, and that's equal to 6n minus 8. So the first thing we want to do is we want to move that 8 over to the other side of the equal sign. And when that 8 jumps over the equal sign, what happens to that 8 if I'm minusing it at the moment? What happens when it jumps over? You add it. Good, I add it. Excellent. So I'm going to have 214 plus 8 is equal to 6n, which means 222 is equal to 6n. If I'm wanting to find out what n is now, what would I want to do? Divide by 6. Divide by 6, yes. Divide by the coefficient of our variable, and we get the answer of 37. Okay, 37. so that's, yes. <laughs> so that's saying that when n is 37, tn is 214, so now we have to answer our question and saying, is 214 a term in the sequence? Yes. And all of your working is showing why it is a term in the sequence. How are we feeling so far? Is it coming together? Are, are our brains waking up? Are they remembering the things we did last week? Slowly. <laughs> okay. Last one. <laughs> Last one was the one that was causing the most confusion on Thursday. And now we're going to try it again. So which term is the first term to be bigger than 94? So basically, if I have a 94 over here, okay, and I'm going to have an n value over there, what would my next n value be where this number over here is now going to be bigger than 94? That's my help. So it's saying if we have 94 as a tn, what would its n be? And then what would be the next n after that? Give it a try. Seeing some lovely answers in the chat. Some Piwe, how can I help? Oh, Eric, I think some Piwe is having audio issues. Do you mind stepping in there? Um, yeah, MK, you can definitely you can't answer when you're done. Okay, so Aviyile, your 17 is looking positive, but that's the end value for 94. So in this question, if it's saying what would be the term that where it's bigger than 94, we're looking for the n that's just past that. Oh, SMP, where I couldn't hear you, sweetheart. So let's try and type this all in. Don't panic, Keisha. We're going to go through it together now. So now we're saying, well, if my n value is 94, Trying to make it so that it will be big enough on your screens. Okay. If my n value is 94, so I'm going to have 94 plus 8, which is equal to 6n. And 94 plus 8 is going to give me 102 is equal to 6n, which means my n value would be 70. So what that's saying so far is that when my tn is 94, my n would be 17. 
Keisha, so far, does that make sense? Just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But they're wanting to know what term would be bigger than 94. And because this question's a bit ambiguous, I would actually give you both answers. If you gave me the answer of 100, I would have given you that answer. Or you could have said T18. The best possible answer would be term 18 is equal to 100. Because then you're cancelling all ambiguity. How did you get to 17 is equal to n? So you got 17 is equal to n by substituting. So this part up here, you substituted the 94 into the tn, and then we moved our 8 across. So we did some sort of equation manipulation, and then we divided by 6. That's how we got there. And then we know we want the one that's just after that. Okay. Yes, no, maybe. Where are we at? You're so quiet today. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Okay. Let's see if we can think of some common common mistakes. So you know whenever I'm talking and I say, oh, I've set a trap for you. Don't walk into my trap. That's generally what happens when we have some common problems. <laughs> because it's Tuesday. Yeah, I get it. I know. And it's been a long weekend. My brain is also tired. I want you to think of some of the common things that we have been doing wrong. So think about this one. Think about the things that you did wrong. And let's try and write some things, some common things, some common problems. What are some of the things that are easy to make mistakes with? And for some of you, it might just be things that you find is too hard. So like, what is something you're finding tricky to find? So what is the what is the part of finding the equation that you find difficult or what is something that you struggle with? Okay, so Yolanda is saying signs. So let's write that on our list. So far we've got signs. Keep them going, guys. What are the things we're struggling with or finding difficult? Forgot the plus minus changes when you take it to the other side. Beautiful. Also signs. Yutando, also signs. Okay, so this is when we're dealing with the equation. Hit me up. What else have we got? Does everyone find finding the formula okay? Yes, ma'am. Good, Catherine. I'm glad. Good, good, good. How you get the second number? Okay. Finding the n value. Okay, I think these signs are connected over here. Second number, formula. That's this guy. Substituting. Okay. Okay. So let's try and write this out step by step. Also is my little dramatic drama queen. I love it, but so dramatic. For those that are on you, just so you have some back history. Alvarez will tell me that he's understanding nothing, like at a zero, and then lands up getting all the questions right. That's why I'm saying it's being dramatic over here on the, in the chat. Okay, so let's try and break this down a little bit. <laughs> the first thing we're going to look at is if we have a pattern. So let's just write a simple thing over here. So we've got a pattern one, three, five, seven. Nice, simple pattern. Okay. I want you to find the thumbs up and the thumbs down emojis. And I want you to tell me if you're confident in finding the difference. So if you feel like you can find the difference without a problem, give me a thumbs up. If you don't feel confident, give me a thumbs down. So find the emojis, thumbs up. You're fine with finding the difference. Thumbs down, you're not fine. Yes, Lutando. <laughs> the middle. Dramatic. 
Okay. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Good. Good. Okay. So here are our differences too. Awesome. So that's our first step. This is all helping us find the second number. Okay. And our formula. So we know we have Tn is equal to 2n. I'm going to say something that math teachers shouldn't say, but I'm going to tell you to ignore the n. Okay. Because I'm on your side here. I'm not your teacher in the classroom. I'm purely here to help you do the best you can. So I'm going to say things which math teachers are going to cringe to. We are going to ignore this n. We are going to just think about this number two that we have over here, okay? And we are wanting to get that first number that we have in the se sequence. So how do I go from two to one? How do I go from two to one? Minus one. Minus one. That's it. Think about it like that. Don't think about substituting. Don't think about where things are going. If you're really struggling with finding the second number, think about this first number that you're dealing with and think, how do I get from that number, that two, how do I get to one? Okay, so let's try another one exactly like that. Let's see. Let's see if you find this a little bit easier. So three, nine, 15, 21. Okay. First step, what is my difference? What is my difference in this sequence? Good, 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 good. Nice job, guys. Yes, good. My difference is six. Okay, so we're going to write that in. We're going to say Tn is equal to 6n. We're going to think about this number. We've got a six. I want to three. How do I go from six to three? Minus three. Just think about it like that. Does that help? Those who, who are struggling with the second number, the people who said second number was a problem, does that help at all? Let me know. Um, I'm sorry to bother you. Please Never can you bother. repeat because I'm kind of lagging so I couldn't hear you. No, it's never a bother yourself. So all I'm saying is when we're trying to find the second number, think about your difference. So like here, I've got that 6n and think, how do I get to my first term from 6? So if I'm wanting to get from 6 to 3, all I have to do is minus 3. Oh, Letando, I'm so glad. I'm so glad at feeling easy. Good. I'm glad. Excellent. Okay. Once we have our second number, <laughs> our life becomes much easier because once we have our formula, everything is in place. The important thing is to think of when you are working with a formula, you have an input and you have an output. So we're going to put something in and we get something out. The n is always going to be our input and n can be any number as long as it's a whole number. Okay, it can be any number. And Tn is always going to be our output. So if I'm looking for n, then I have an output. I have already got an answer and I'm trying to find what my input is. Aviyile, how can I help? Ma'am, this is yeah. off topic, like really out of topic, but on which days do we have quizzes? Thursdays. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. No problem. Okay, so this concept of trying to find our input and output, we're going to talk a little bit more about in the questions we're going to do today. The work that we do today is going to be very similar to what we've been doing last week. It's just that we're just going to be doing it with pictures. No, so the cool things in PWA is that once we have our pattern, it works for everything. So then if I'm wanting to look at this this sequence over here. So let's look at this 15, for example. That's term one, term two, term three. Then I'm saying that my n value is three and my tn value is 15. So if I put it into my formula, I'm saying six times three, which is 18, 18 minus three, which is 15. So once we have our formula, it works for our whole sequence. That's the like gloriousness <laughs> with getting a pattern. Okay, so we're going to try and take some of these things that we've spoken about and we're going to put it into some of the work that we're going to do today. It's the same idea, it's just with pictures instead of numbers. Let's zoom in. Okay, so 
I'm sure those of you who have already done this in class, you will have been given patterns in forms of pictures like this one. But they love to give picture patterns in end of year exams and June exams. So expect to see something similar to this. We're going to kind of work through this first one together. So we've got these patterns below. We've got picture number one. So that's our first house. Picture number two, where we've got two houses. And picture number three, where we've got three houses. And now we have to say how many matches there are. So in picture one, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six matches. <laughs> MK, that's why you've got me. See, it's all fine. Picture number two, how many matches are in picture number two? Ten. Count them up. 12. Are you saying 12? Are we all confident with 12? 12. 11. Okay, so so far our options are 12 and 11. Do we have anything else on the board? We've got 10 coming in. Okay, let's count. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Why is it not twelve? Why was it eleven? Iana? I got too excited. Yeah. Good. They're sharing this one matchstick. This matchstick is part of both houses. And so because it's being shared, we're not going to count it twice. Okay. Picture number three. How many matches do I have? 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. And so the whole point of that pattern of all the pictures was to get us to this point over here where we have a pattern and we have a table. And once we have a pattern and a table, we're sorted. Now we have to use whatever letters they give us. So like here they've got a P and they've got an M. And so we have to use a P and we have to use an M. But if you find those tricky, just write at the top, that's your N and that's your TN. It's always going to be in that order. N at the top, TN at the bottom. Okay. And then we follow the exact same thing that we did previously. First thing we want to do is what is our constant difference? Five. Good. Plus five. five or minus five? Plus five. Plus five. Good. Okay. So my constant difference is plus five. So what does that mean? Picture four is going to be, I saw quite a few people answer it in the, in the chat. It's going to be 21 because we're going to add five to 16. Okay. Now we've got to try and put this into an equation. And instead of using TN and N, we have to use P and M. So let's try and start by doing it as a TN and N, and then we'll work our way to P and M. So if I'm writing it as TN and N, I have TN is equal to 5N. Now I want you to think of the trick I've just spoken to you about. We have 5 and we want 6. What do we have to do? Add 1. Add 1. Beautiful. 10 equals 5n plus 1. Done. When we want to check our work to make sure we're right, we can choose any one of the other pairs. So there n is 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. We're right. We're all good. Okay. Now, how am I going to write this, this tn and this n? How am I going to write it with p and m and not tn and n? Who thinks they can try? MK works in all cases. Aviile, yes. Ma'am, would you would you write it as wait no? No, trust yourself. Give it a go. Um, I first said um P is equals to a five M plus one. Mm -mm. It's the other way around. Other way around, yeah. But you, you, it's good that you started noticing that. Good. So M is equal to 
5p plus 1. Okay, so let's have a look at why that's the case, guys. I, Crystal, well done. I see it in the chat. Excellent. Whenever we're working with a table, I, I can't stress this enough. It's always the case. Your N is always going to be at the top. Your TN is always going to be at the bottom. So if you are able to write this formula with TN and N, all we need to do is we then need to look at what they are. So our N is a P. So instead of writing an N, we're going to write P. And our TN is an M. So instead of writing TN, we're going to write an M. Jasmine, how can I help? You need to unmute, yeah. yeah. Um, can TN be substituted for any letters? Can TN be substituted for any letters? Yes, so when we start when we moving start through, eventually those T ends and those ends are going to become X's and Y's. So they can be, they can be any letters. But if they just ask you for a normal formula, then we would use T, N, and N. Yulama, how can I help? Was it a mistake? <laughs> okay. So now we have a formula. We have got M is equal to 5P plus 1. How many matchsticks are needed for picture 100? So let's try and break this up. Is matchsticks M or is it P? Are my matchsticks M or my matchsticks P? Uh, yeah. My matchsticks are M, good. Okay, so if we have a look at our table, we'll see number of matches and then the M is in brackets. So our matchsticks are M and our picture number is P. Okay, so they're saying how many matchsticks? So what is M if P is 100? So we're gonna substitute that in. We're gonna say, well, what is M if P is 100? Okay, so all that's saying is 5 times 100 is 500, and 501 is 501. So we would need 501 matches or matchsticks for picture 100. Good of you, yes. Okay, let's look at the second one. Which picture number can you make with 261 matches? So what is P if M is 261? Don't worry, Keisha, it's just our first picture puzzle that we're doing. We're gonna do a couple more of them. Don't stress, it will start seeping in. So for D, we're saying what is P if M is 261? Give it a go on your side, and then I'll do it on the board. So give it a try. Try and put it into the formula that you found. You've got M is equal to 5P plus 1. And I'm saying M is 261. What is P? Let's try. So M Man. is two, yes, hi. The answer is 52. Okay, let's go through it. I like it. Oh, MK, you don't have to keep your answers to yourself. Um, so we have M is 261 is equal to 5P plus one. Our first step is we wanna move that one over. So 261 minus one is equal to 5P which means 260 is 5P 
And now we need to divide 260 by five. And we get a total of 52. La la, well done. I see quite a few 52s in the chat as well. Nice work. So the only difference with these questions is that instead of TN and N, we now have to deal with different kinds of letters. I'm going to sneak into those questions. Okay. Let's try another one. This one should feel nice and easy now. How many toothpicks are in picture one? Thank you, Alvarez. I got a bit worried there. There was like a lot of silence. And I was like, this is such a nice, easy thing. One, two, three, four. There are four toothpicks in picture one. Okay. Now, don't fall for the same trap that we did last time. There is a common toothpick in picture two. How many toothpicks are there in picture two? Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Picture three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ta -da. What would picture four be? Thirteen. 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 Yes. Okay. How do we know that it's going to be thirteen? What is my constant difference? Plus three. Plus three. Yes, guys. Okay. Now we're going to get into the habits of when we're given a table like this, we're gonna get into a habit of saying that this is N and this is TN so that we can start associating the right things with each one. Okay, I want you to try this one by yourselves. I want an answer in P's and T's because that is what they are asking for here. They're wanting an equation in the form T equals. So that means I have to use T's and P's. But if you feel more confident, start with TN and N and then substitute in the P and T and let me know how it goes and write your answer in the chat once you have an answer. So, it's just changing because it's just trying to help you understand that there sometimes can be a different input and a different output to T in and N. But it's the same concept. Because eventually when we move through grade nine, it's gonna become X's and Y's and we're gonna look at it on a straight line. So it's gonna become something else over time. Okay, so give us a go, guys. What is this going to be? T is going to be equal to what? Let's see, Fatima has an answer. Keep them coming, guys. Let's see what your answers are. Okay, so Anam, that's great for TN and N. I'm absolutely stoked with that. Oh, I'm going to highlight it. TN is definitely equal to 3N, okay, because so my difference is 3. Then we think about 3 but I want four, so I have to plus one. So Tn is definitely equal to N plus one, but we now need to give it in terms of T and P. We need to use these guys. So I see quite a few of you got the T is equal to, and then you got sidetracked and you wrote N. Yes, there we go. So T is going to be equal to 3P plus 1. So wherever we have an N, we're going to write P. And wherever we have a TN, we're going to write T. Okay. So the P comes from this table. This table is saying that when we're dealing with a picture number, we have to call it a P. And when we're dealing with a number of toothpicks, we have to call it a T. So they've changed it for us. They're being a bit rude. 
Then a question to try and help us get to where we're going. Do you think this would be an increasing relationship? Or do you think this would be a decreasing relationship? I'm just curious. What type of relationship do you think this would be? Good, guys. Your instincts are great. It's definitely increasing. Because if we look at our numbers, they are going up. So it is an increasing relationship. Beautiful. Yes, because you're adding each time. Good. Nice. It is an increasing relationship. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to keep this over here. So this is an increasing relationship. Good. How many toothpicks? So is toothpicks P or is toothpicks T? Toothpicks. Is toothpicks P or is toothpicks T? T. Good, Stephen. Good. Nice. Okay. Toothpicks are T. How many toothpicks? So what is T if I'm wanting my eighth pattern? Okay. So it's saying, what is T if P is eight? So we're saying our pattern number is eight and we want to know what T is. What is T? when P is eight. So now everyone can try and work that out for me. What is P when T, what is T when P Three is eight? Five. I should have used different letters seeing this now. They are two, they sound too similar. 25. T is 25. Yes, guys, nice answers coming through. Good. T is equal to three times eight plus one. Three times eight is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. So T is equal to 25. Okay, last one. <laughs> there we go, Alvarez. Which pattern will use 64 toothpicks? So now we're saying our toothpicks are 64, but we don't know what our pattern is. So our toothpicks are 64, but we don't know what our pattern is. So we need to find P if T is 64. Okay. We will be doing algebraic expressions next. 21. That's our next course. 21, 21. So if T is 64, what is P? We're going to first move that 1 over. So 64 minus 1 is equal to 3P. 63 is equal to 3P, which means P is equal to 21. Not so bad, hey? It's, it's not as scary as it seems once we start working through the questions. We haven't even gotten to our puzzle today. I'm feeling quite sad. I'll have to give you two puzzles on Thursday. Oh, I did divide. Sorry, I just didn't show that step. Divided by three, divided by three. Okay. I think this will be our last one of the evening. So we've got matches that are used to make the pattern below. So I'm just going to help you out. I know it's difficult when you're sort of looking at it. a screen. Pattern one, I've got one, two, three, four, five matches. Pattern two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Pattern three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. All right. How many matches are needed for the fourth pattern? Yes, four. I'll raise yes. Four. I need to add four, which means my fourth pattern would be four. plus 17. four. Seventeen. I would need seventeen matches. Good. Okay. And we knew that because we could see that the difference between five and nine and nine and thirteen is we were adding four. Okay. So now if I was writing this formula with Tn and n, I'm gonna have Tn is equal to 4n, what's going to be my number that I'm going to write over there? Plus 
plus one. one. Yes, my number is a four and I want it to be five. So I need to plus one. Okay, but they are wanting this in the formula of matches with M and pattern number with P. So my pattern number is P, my matches are M. This is my input, that is my output. Write this formula for me with M's and P's. M's and P's. Yes. Yes. My output, my number of matches is equal to, and they helped you out here. They said M is equal to 4P plus 1. And that is going to be the formula that we are going to use for the rest of these questions. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. Let's see if anyone can manage this one now. Now we have the formula, okay? This is what we wanted to get to. If a box has 50 matches, what is the largest pattern number that can be made from one box of matches. I want you to think about it. I want you to read it again. If a box of matches has 50 matches, what is the largest pattern number that can be made from one box of matches? So I want you to think on your side, what is M? What is P? Which one of those do we know? Which one do we not know? How would I put this into my formula? That's how I want you to think about this. And then I want you to put the information you have into the formula and I want you to solve. Good, you know M Lutando, excellent, you know M. So if we know M and we're trying to find P, we're gonna say, well, M is 50 and we're looking for P. That's okay, Nam. thanks for letting me know. I'll see you on Thursday. I'm gonna move that one over. So I'm gonna have 50 minus one, which is equal to four P. So 49 is equal to four P. Now, when I divide both of these by four, I'm gonna get a decimal number because four doesn't go into 49. So 49 divided by four is going to give me 12 comma two five is equal to P. So that means that pattern 13, I won't have enough matches. So what is the largest pattern number that can be made from one box of matches? Pattern number 12. Because if I went to pattern 13, I'm not gonna have enough matches. And that is where we are going to call it a night. I'm gonna leave you in the capable hands of Eric for the last five minutes. And if anyone has lingering questions or things that they want some clarification on, please feel free to ask him. Um, I've had a lovely time with you this evening and I will see you all on Thursday. I hope you have a lovely week, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, man.